The broken record continues. I would almost hang it up today if it wasn't for the West Coast. They do have a weather system moving through that region. And there it is, western Nevada near Reno, getting some rain with the atmospheric river affecting that region, which we'll take a look at momentarily. Elsewhere around the country, stagnant front in the central plains extending up to Montana, and then we have another reinforcement of cold air coming down through New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Kentucky. And that's driving this front that we see here near Boston and New York City. Quiet conditions in the Gulf Coast region, some storms affecting Miami. And just kind of a weak, almost offshore flow along the Gulf Coast. And you can see those dew points there in the 40s and 50s. So this air definitely coming from the interior of the eastern U.S. Taking a look out in the Pacific, we've got systems lined up along the 40 to 45 degree latitude parallel. And then taking a look at Alaska, cold weather continues with the Gulf of Alaska getting very stormy. 968 millibar low in the Aleutians, and then taking a look at the Canadian Arctic, not very cold. We do have some sub-zero readings starting to show up. I'm going to have to move the map to let you see that. Minus 8 at alert, minus 2 at Eureka, but down south, a lot of areas above freezing. Pretty stormy out in the Atlantic. You can see Iceland here getting some rain and cool conditions. And then eastern Canada, the Maritimes and Quebec being affected by another occluded weather system. A little bit of snow up there near Churchill and central Manitoba. And 38 at the Sour in Winnipeg. Let's take a look at the temperature records. Here we're looking at the afternoon highs. All of these values are afternoon highs. The only difference is everything from here out to the East Coast. Those are record highs, not actually breaking the records, but coming pretty close. And then these are coming close to record cold maximums, if that makes sense. In other words, very cool for this time of the afternoon. So 66 at Los Angeles, that's definitely a cool afternoon. And 65 there at Stockton, you can kind of see where the cold air is versus the warm air where Missoula is coming up to near 70. And here is the same sort of chart for tomorrow. These are forecast fronts, isobars, and temperature records. No records except at Tampa. It looks like they're going to break it by one degree with 90 degrees. The rest of it is just approaching records. And that's the case in West Texas coming up to near 90 with warm downslope flow setting up. Also warm conditions in Louisiana, East Texas. And then behind the front in the Pacific, look at that cool air coming down. 62 for a high in Sacramento and 67 in Los Angeles. Let's take a look at the atmospheric river affecting that region today. Remember, we had that band of clouds right in this area near Reno. And this is a great site for that, UCSD. You see San Diego. They've got this uh, forecast here, atmospheric river, IWV, and IVT forecasts. That's what we want. Now, IWV, that's the integrated water vapor that's very similar to precipitable water. And then we have IVT, that's integrated vapor transport. And that's what's used to actually measure these atmospheric rivers. Let's take a look. So starting out this morning, Averaging maybe 300 to 500, except for some peaks of 6 to 800 in the mountains. And then we go forward. Those amounts weaken as they usually do as they move eastward. One little weak fetch and then pretty large one coming in for around Sunday. You can see that moving into the San Francisco area, the Napa Valley region. IVT values well over 1,000 
So that certainly puts that into a significant range. The Central California Valleys and Sierra Nevadas most heavily hit. And then a little bit of a tail end coming in through the Southern California region. And that moves on off towards the east. Then a couple more shots coming in for the North California area. And then a good one for midweek for Oregon. Let's see what that looks like on the standard forecast charts. Not very much going on for today, but we watched the West Coast there around Sunday morning. There goes one good band of moisture and more of it building across the San Francisco Sacramento area. And you can see some mixed precipitation possibly in the mountains. The models are not going to be great for forecasting precipitation type, but there is that threat there of some wintry weather. Anyway, that launches off to the east. That's going to become significant in the Great Plains. You can see it crossing the mountains there. Utah getting some heavy snow and some rain for Monday night. And then it makes its way into Colorado. Some snows there. And you can see the system initially dries. It comes downslope from the Rockies, Pacific Front, about like that. But eventually it's going to pull that moisture together from Texas northward for Tuesday night and Wednesday, and we get this MCS developing across the central states. That's going to be late Tuesday night, and everything moves towards the east. Some cold air coming in the backside right there. That's pretty good fetch there. And it sweeps eastward through Thursday. Kind of a strong system there on the east coast, and an occlusion affecting the Great Lakes, keeping things kind of gray and showery. And towards the weekend, Halloween, looks pretty mild, some cool air in place. This is an old stagnating polar high. And then we get another system coming through the Pacific Northwest that moves through the northern states and produces some wintry weather. And that's probably about as far as we want to go with that forecast. Wow, look at that snow showers for the 2nd of November there in the Northeast. Taking a look around the country this afternoon, there's our atmospheric river there. Not too much left of that, but still a considerable cirrus and a lot of mid and low clouds, especially where we have the upslope on the windward side of the Sierra Nevadas. These convective elements, it looks like they kind of died out. We had them early this morning, producing some snow showers and rain showers out in those mountains, and those pretty much vanished as the afternoon went on. A lot of the strong lift has moved up into the Great Basin area. That's it right there. That's the synoptic scale lift. Some convective cloud tops associated with that where we have strong lift and dry low-level conditions. And that's how things look up in Washington and Idaho. That strong lift moving into Idaho, and I can see a little bit of a dry slot in the mid-levels in central Washington, but still onshore flow. So it still remains unstable in the Willamette Valley and the Portland-Seattle region. Montana looking pretty nice this afternoon. A lot of mountain wave activity due to the fast flow aloft and the humidity in the mid-levels. And looks like we're picking up some snow there. Winter starting to set in in the mountains. Yellowstone National Park there. And the, what is that? The, uh, yeah, I had to get some help on that. The Bighorn Mountains just west of Sheridan. Cold air advection is the rule in Minnesota and North Dakota, so we've got a little bit of low cloud in that region associated with the air mass modification. Same thing in the Central Plains. Cold air advection a little bit weaker. And going further to the south, we pick up the warm air advection. There's the nose of the moisture right there near Quana, Throckmorton, and that's heading up north towards the I think there's probably kind of a weak frontal zone in that part of Oklahoma through this area here. 
And it is a warm day in Texas, and we can see the moisture return coming up north. Got that strong lee side troughing along the Rockies near Denver, and that's helping to create a pressure differential and bringing up the airflow from the south. Florida getting storms once again with a stagnating frontal zone way down in this region. So we're getting a few anvils going up around West Palm Beach, Miami, all the way up towards maybe not quite Vera Beach, but kind of in that area. Some storms going up in North Carolina, all the way down towards around Myrtle Beach with another frontal zone. You saw that on the surface analysis earlier. Then we work our way a little further north along the frontal zone. 60s and a few 70s out ahead of that front, but back behind it, 40s and 50s. And that's the picture around Montreal, Toronto, a myriad of cloud elements. Classic cold air advection pattern, open cell cumulus, and all that stuff just flowing towards the southeast. And I can show you a skew T within that. Let's see, that's going to be back in here. Yeah, that's that cold air advection zone. And there you can see it. Looks like uh, that's probably the top of the frontal layer at about six or 7,000 feet. A lot of trapped moisture beneath that. That's going to be in this region right here. And so we get the strong heating, the destabilization in the lower boundary layer, and that rises and spreads out into stratocumulus layers. Above that, fair skies. A little bit of cirrus up there at about 25, 30,000 feet. But overall, most of this is definitely low clouds. And here we can see all the activity that's going to be affecting the West Coast. Not really this system so much as this one. That's the big one. Let's see how that evolves. See how fast that moves. And then by Sunday, 942 millibar low being forecast by the models, even 940. If that was a hurricane, that would probably be in the Cat 3 to Cat 4 range. We're not getting hurricane winds with that. For one thing, the Coriolis effect, that's going to diminish the wind field. But still, that's going to be quite a strong storm. Then you can see how that evolves. The circulation includes there the main Bear Clinic frontal zone, the active energy that's already starting to cross into the Great Basin, and that's the old occluded low that's in the process of decaying. You can see it rapidly fills there, and it's pretty much gone by early Tuesday. You can see the next system taking shape right there, not quite as strong, and that hits the northwest around Friday. We haven't looked much at a Europe lately, but uh, this appears to be a cold pattern. The two dominant features, this stagnating polar high across the Bay of Biscay, southern England. Then we have this polar low up near St. Petersburg. And in between that, the pressure gradient bringing down cold air from the north. So certainly a cold day across much of eastern and central Europe. The pattern will moderate going into the weekend. You can see an increasing Atlantic influence, warm air advection bringing in clouds and setting up some precipitation across the British Isles. Here comes a strong front around Wednesday, line of showers and a few storms coming into England around then. And overall, not much development, just kind of the conveyor belt of moisture, and this could even be an atmospheric river coming up towards England around next weekend. Let's pull up the precipitable water. Of course, we don't have any IVT charts, but let's take a look. The first system, about a half inch to one inch precipitable water, and then we get the next big system around late next week. There it is right there. Widespread bands of one to one and a half inches. 
and there comes one towards the weekend, that's pretty potent. That could probably bring some flooding rains and bad weather. That's over an inch and a half in Ireland. And you can see those one and a half inch amounts head into England, Swindon, Bristol, and Birmingham. So that could be quite a rainstorm for the UK next weekend. And that's all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you all have a great weekend. We will talk to you again on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a good one. Bye-bye.